because it's so dark on my porch from the rain, it's just overcast here in sunny California. <laughs> no, actually in Sacramento. But, uh, and that's part of California, but just we don't like to admit it. <laughs> but uh, as I'm looking out over the rain coming down, it's so dark that I really can't get my camera to adjust to the light. You know, that it just seems to not be able to handle the indirect lighting that well. And so maybe doing a lot of recordings over here at our mantle. You know, I call this my mantle. You know, it's like Elijah's mantle, you know, that he gave to Elisha. Well, this is my mantle. It's kind of like a cross. You know, I put it like a cross beam and I carry it. I take up my cross. <laughs> Don't get it? Don't worry about it. We'll work on that. But uh, in today's devotional, one of them that I was reading, this one's Scott Collin, it's uh, it was very poignant. It kind of kind of reminded me at the right time of what I needed to do, and maybe you do too. And sometimes you need to step back, you know. And there's a lot of things that are, oh, even for mature Christians, you know, a little hard to handle sometimes. That it's just just too much junk, you know. You ever you ever seen people like that that they just have too much junk in their life that you just you really don't want to hear it. You know, they they start talking or they start sharing, you know, and they're going on and on about every other thing except for God, you know, or every other problem except for a solution. Or, you know, they have nothing good to say but only bad. And you kind of go after a while, you know, you just kind of feel kind of like dirty or kind of uncomfortable and you just kind of, it's just too much junk, you know, and you really need to pull back, you know, and... I read this few lines of this devotional before I share it with you that I was reminded of someone that well I fell in love with <laughs> oh not the kind of love that you want to marry the person <laughs> no not the kind of love at all you know let me reiterate that before I get in trouble because you know I may have his her husband come after me <laughs> kill me no, the kind of love that you just, you just, oh, you just love the person, you know, they're just sweet, they're, they may not be that in real life, you don't know completely, but you know, the image of them, the, the, the part of Jesus in them that you really get a chance to relate to, and sometimes you get to see this person for a long time, and I did, you know, and I've seen them off and on different times in my life, and seen what they've been through, you know, and some of what they've been through has affected them over the years, you know, and taken a lot out of them, but, you know, the joy that I have of the memory of the person is, her name's Julie Langfield, by the way. She's a pastor's wife, you know, and God knows that poor woman's been through it. <laughs> but she's got wonderful children, and, you know, she's been through a lot of challenges in her life from as much as I know about her, you know, and I know a lot. I may not know everything, but I know a lot, and I know a lot more than I won't say. But, you know, and that she doesn't know I know. But... You know, from what she had come from to where she is, you know, and the things that she had done along the way, she doesn't know how much of an impact she may have been to other people, you know. And I was blessed, you know, by her because she was the one that I always, in seeing, was ministered to by. It was like um, kind of what we call about the Rebison, you know. The, the rabbis are always nice, but the Rebisons are always better. <laughs> well, in this case, I always liked, you know, the rabbi or the rabbi. I always liked the pastor's wife, you know. Now the pastor's okay, he's a good guy, you know, and everybody knows him, and he sings and does all this thing, but there was always a special moment that I always felt that, you know, sometimes when people get together, there's a mature one and an immature, and sometimes they either balance each other out, or one passes, or one's more mature in one area, one's more mature in another area, and they grow together. You know, God brings them up as strengthening each other, encouraging one another, and becoming the oneness that God wants for them. And in my life, this person, you know, always exemplified Jesus in a peculiar way. Now, the pastor had a song that I always thought of when I looked to the Lamb of God that was slain, you know, and that was always kind of like, you know, my image of him, you know, and it was kind of like, yeah, it was cool. He's a singer, and so is she. But she sang this one song that she wrote, and uh, it exemplifies today's devotion. And it was beautiful, poignant. Every time that she sang it, it ministered to me. And, you know, whenever she'd find out that I was there or she knew, you know, she would 
sometimes, you know, included in the worship thing, or if I mentioned it, you know, she would do that, you know, in the worship team. And uh, it goes something like this. It goes, <clears throat> you can tell I don't sing a lot lately. I do a lot of talking, so my singing voice is kind of shot. <laughs> but am I embarrassed? Heck no, if I can dance, I can sing. <laughs> Come away with me, my love. To a place beyond all reason, partake within your heart of my perfect peace. I desire, I desire, oh boy, I'm losing something. I desire for you to know me in a way you get to taste of. Let me pour myself upon you, enter in. Boy, I need to practice singing some more. Lord, come away with me, my love, to a place beyond all reasoning. Partake within your heart of my perfect peace. I desire for you to know me in a way you've yet to taste of. Let me pour myself upon you, enter in. <clears throat> Man, when you got a cold or you got your sinuses going, you just can't work it. You can't go out though, you can't go whatever. But anyways, you get the idea. You got the words, you got the lyrics, you kind of got the rhythm, you know. I've got rhythm, I've got my God to that for anything more. But the reality of her life was personified in her emotion as it came through the song. Now, the one thing you learn about musicians, <laughs> who, you know, having worked with a lot of them behind the scenes, you know, is that they can put on a show that doesn't have anything to do with what you think they are feeling at the time that they're singing it. Because God does that even with men of God. The Spirit comes upon them, gives the ministration to the people and all that kind of stuff, but then when the Spirit's done, hey, they can be just as carnal and as crooked and as messed up as anybody else. And there are some Christian musicians, contemporary Christian musicians, that will, you know, wrote books about it and will talk about it. And they minister to people. Keith Green had a ministry to musicians because a lot of times people deify musicians as though they're great men and women of God because they write such dynamic lyrics doesn't always mean they live the lyrics out but sometimes they do and sometimes they do fit you know at some point in time in their life that with which they've written now me being a writer I've written lots of songs you know and I know that I could write you know pretty inspirational stuff you know at different times you know but that doesn't mean that you know I'm necessarily connected to it it means I know the techniques involved but those things that God uses irregardless of that means that he causes his anointing to come upon it to a person that's listening. So you see, you kind of don't want to lift the person up too high because it's really not about them. You know, and God bless Julie. I mean, she's a doll. You know, she's gorgeous and whatever, you know, and got a beautiful voice and used to sing that, you know, in a tender way. And the younger she was, the more impact it had. And then when she was older, it's kind of, yeah, that's good. They revamped it a little bit, you know. But for me... The memory will always be there because every time I sing it in my mind and I hear it in my heart and I recall it to my soul, then I lift it up in my spirit to the place that I know and it's with my God that I walk away and I become whole because it is that memory of those things that were past that bring me to the present, that takes me to the future, that causes me to enjoy that which ever lasts because I will never be taken away from the memory that I have of the joy that I receive in the Spirit of God as He sang to me through her and I was touched. So you see, sometimes it's all about Jesus, irregardless of who He uses. And for me, it was. But today I was kind of being bombarded by thoughts and actions and reactions and things that are just kind of too much junk, you know. Needed to junk the bunk or bunk, debunk the junk, you know, and kind of get rid of it, you know. And it's kind of like, you know, beginning to kind of burn me out. You know, it's kind of going, Lord, how can I help? How can I do this? How can I touch you? You know, I can't pray this. I can't. And God finally just said, reflect me. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, you know, go back to the beginning. No. 
said, my children, I am here beside you. Draw near in spirit to me. Shut out the distractions of the world. I am your life. The very breath of your soul is what I am. Learn what it is to shut yourself in the secret place of your being, which is my secret place also. He that hides himself in the shadow of the Almighty. Well, anyways, I got six different verses now running through my mind going, because I'm kind of getting like God speaking to me while I'm kind of like doing this. It's kind of like, oh, thank you, Lord, that's cool. And I'm talking to you at the same time. I'm kind of going, I'm losing it. <laughs> True it is. I wait in many a heart, but so few retire to that inner place of the being to commune with me. Wherever the soul is, I am. Man has rarely understood this. I am actually at the center of every man's being, but distracted with the things of the sense life, he finds me not, because he is attracted by those external senses and not aware of the internal being that I am. Do you realize that I am telling you truths, revealing them, not repeating often told facts? Meditate on all I say. Ponder it. Not to draw your own conclusions, but to absorb mine. All down the ages, men have been too eager to say what they thought about my truth, and so doing, they have grievously erred. Hear me. Talk to me. Reflect me. Do not say what you think about me. My words need none of man's explanations. I can explain to each heart. I need not man to deliver me or to reveal me. Make me real and leave me to do my own work. To lead a soul to me is one thing. To seek to stay with it, to interpret Mars the first great act. So, so would it be with human intercourse. How much more then when it is a question of the soul and me, its maker, and only real spirit that understands it. In other words, there can only be a reality of Jesus in you as you make that connection for you, by you, yourself. I can inspire you by saying nothing and just glowing. You know, and when it happens, oh well, it's like it's cool, you know, because I'm communing with my God. And uh, personally, I don't want you around. <laughs> no offense. I kind of like being with my God. And uh, those are the times that you need to find for yourself. Really. You need to find that place, you know, where nothing I can say can help you or do for you what you have to discover on your own. You know, you have to get that one song or that one person, get that one thought or that one moment that suddenly opens up the inside, you know, and you walk back inside yourself and you meet Jesus, maybe for the first time. Yeah. How wonderful for you. God bless you. If it is. You'll always have it. If you don't have it, do. Just do. I can't give you techniques, you know, I can't give you tricks, I can't give you a gazillion scriptures, you know, to lead you and you're going to believe it and do it, you know, but God said it. He didn't say it to non-Christians, He said it to Christians. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come in and sup with him. That's how simple it is. Jesus isn't on the inside unless you let him. And then, if the door is closed, you did it. Because he's there. He's waiting. It's up to you. It's your choice. There's a good poster I really like. Guys, as close as you want to be. Or as far. But you see, you're the one that's close or as far because God is in you. And it's really not 
his issue than yours. But man, once you're there, you're never alone. You can always, I don't want to say tap in, because that sounds so stupid when you're talking about him, when you're talking to him. You don't tap in. But you do go in. You enter in to a place beyond all reason. You partake within your heart of a perfect peace. You come to know him in a way you never thought of. You take his hook upon you, and you come into him with him. Because there's nothing in this world that compares to knowing Jesus inside you. To being able to talk to him in you. To being able to hear him always. And knowing he'll never leave you. And I'm telling you, there ain't nothing like it anywhere. Because God did it. God said it. God did it. And it was so. He can make you whole. Because until you have that, you're still playing kind of the religious game. You're still kind of, you know, wandering around the outside. You know, trying to clean up things that really don't matter. But once you've got it on the inside, everything will change on the outside. Everything. Because you have someone to talk to. You have someone to cry with. You have someone who listens. You have someone who is there and not made up. It's where you got to go and you got to get. You got to want to be. Because you will see him. And he'll say, I know you. <laughs> Welcome. Come on, let's go. I got some things for you. Let me check it out. Let's show you where I got you staying. This is yours. I made it just for you. That's Jesus. But if you don't know him now, you don't know him then. But if you know him now, you know him then. I don't know. Maybe you need to begin again. Maybe you need to start over somehow. But if you do need to, just do it. Just don't figure it out. Kind of like the devotional says, don't, don't try to work it out. Just do it. Just, God, if you're real, show me. If you're real, talk to me. If you're real, help me to find you. I'm not giving up God until I find you. I'm not content until I find you. I'm not satisfied until I find you. I'm not going to let go until you bless me. That's our Jacob. That's our man we are liking after. That's our person to be. That you go after God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and cling to Him and not let go until you know Jesus in you. How easy it can be to just say, God, save me. And He does. For if He says the word, it is so. Don't make it so hard on yourself. Don't make it too complicated. Don't make it too spiritual. Just go to God. Just be with Jesus. <laughs> Just be touched inside. Just be alive. For the first time in your life. But I'll tell you, when you are, you'll never be the same.